Welcome to part 4 of the Ray Marching Shader in Unity tutorial by Peerplay. In the previous part we've set up the sphere tracing system so that we can visualize the distance field as a flat color. In this part we will implement some basic shading by calculating the normal direction based on a directional light. Creating these free tutorials takes a lot of time and effort and I couldn't have created these without the support of all the amazing patrons at my Patreon. If you find the contents of my tutorials helpful, consider supporting me at Patreon. In doing so, you not only support me creating these, but you get access to the source files, exclusive tutorials and extra content. Special thanks to MR, Andrew LeBoy, Devin the Dude, Derek Vechter and Patrick Nugent. This is the result of the previous part where we visualized a distance field as a sphere. We can scale the sphere and set the position of the sphere by public variables. Now the sphere shows up as a flat white circle and let's now change that by adding some lighting. So let's open up the Raymart shader. When we've hit something in the distance field, we want to apply some shading. Now to apply the shading, we need to get the normal. So let's create a new flow 3 and we'll call this the get normal. And we need to get the normal of the current position. So we're going to input a flow 3 and call this P for position. To get the normal in a distance field is slightly different from a polygonal 3D mesh. It turns out that the gradient of the distance field is the same as the normal at that point. The gradient is the derivative of the field in the x, y and z directions. So to calculate the normal we offset the current position by a small number. First we calculate the position plus the offset and next minus the offset and subtract those results from each other for each axis. This means that we need to calculate the distance field a total of 6 extra times to get the normal. So first we need to set an offset and for that I'm going to create a constant flow2 and we'll call this offset. And that is going to be a flow2 and the first one the x value will be the offset so let's set that to 0.001 and the other one will be 0. Now let's calculate the normal for each of the axes of the flow3p input. So let's create a flow3 and we're calling this n for normal and it's going to be a flow3. So we need to run the distance field six times in total. So let's say distance field and in here we need to specify the position plus the offset. So let's say p for the current position plus the offset. And in shaders we can easily convert this into a three component value by for example writing x x x and then this will take the x component three times for its x y and z direction. But we only want to offset it into its x position and not into its y and z. So for the y and z we're going to use the y and y component which is zero which is this component. Now let's copy this line by pressing ctrl c and we're going to subtract from this the distance field minus the offset in its x position. Now we'll do the same for the y and the z. So let's copy this entire line and let's paste it two times. This is going to be a semicolon. So the second line is about the y axis and we want to change this to y x y because the x is 0.001 and it will go into its y component. And the same goes for here. We'll make this y, x, y. And the last one will be y, y, z. And this one will be y, y, z. Now let's see, I made a little mistake here. This one goes away and must be behind here. And now let's return the normalized vector of n. So we'll say return normalize n. Now we can implement the get normal function inside the ray marching. So let's go to shading and we're going to create a flow 3 and we'll call this n for normal. And that is going to be get normal position p. Now to test if the normals are calculated correctly, we can return the normals as a color instead of the white color. So let's change these values to N and let's save the shader and go back to Unity. Did I make a mistake somewhere? Let's see. 
Okay, so the first problem is that there's a space here. I don't know why. And another very silly thing is that I wrote here a Z, but this should be an X because the Z doesn't really exist. So this should be X. And then let's save this. And then let's save this shader. And go back to Unity. Hopefully it works. Yes, it's working. So now this sphere is visualizing the normal directions as a color. But we want to use the normals to calculate a lighting. Another thing you'll notice is that there's a white outline and that is a little bit of overdraw. So if I go into the shader again, then we can change the max iteration to something higher. Now let's make this 164. If I do that, then the overdraw is gone. So to calculate the shading, we need to have a light direction and we're going to use the light direction of the directional light in Unity. So let's go to the Raymarch camera script and we're going to add a public transform for the directional light. Let's create a public transform and we'll call this the directional light. Now we're going to send the forward vector of the directional light to the shader. So in the shader, we need to have a variable called the light direction. Let's go to the shader and scroll to the top. And let's create a uniform flow three and we'll call this light direction, light there. Now let's go back to the Raymarch camera and we're going to set that factor. So let's talk to the Raymarch material and we're gonna set a factor. Now, which factor are we going to set? We're gonna set the light direction now we want to set this to the directional light transform, but if the transform is empty, we want to set it to vector three dot down. So let's do an inline if statement. So we'll say if the directional light has a component, then we're going to get the directional light dot forward, and else we're going to get a vector three dot down. Now with that in place, let's save the script and go back to the shader. And we're going to implement the light direction into the ray marching so we can create the shading. So let's scroll down to the shading. Now let's create a float and we're going to call this light. And to calculate the light, we simply have to do a dot product of the inverse light direction and the normal direction. So if the normal direction is the same as the inverse light direction, the result will be one so the object will be fully lit. So to implement this, we'll simply type dot for dot product. And we want to get the dot product of the minus value of the light direction and the normal. Now we can use this light variable into our result. So let's change this back to one, one, one and multiply this by the light. Now let's save the shader and go back to Unity. Now you'll see that the sphere is lit from the top because we haven't set the directional light yet. So if we drag and drop the directional light into this slot, then you can see that the object is being lit by the directional light. So if we now rotate this light, then you can see that it's changing in the shader. That's it for this part. In the next part, we will visualize the array marching shader in the scene view and use the depth buffer of the camera to make polygonal mesh interact with the array march shader. In this way, you can easily use ray marching in your game. For now, I want to thank you for following this part. If you found this tutorial helpful, feel free to share this video with your peers. To stay updated to new released parts, subscribe to the channel. Happy coding!